Now, I am so honored that over the last 10 years, we have had 600 films created from around the world starring people with disabilities in front of and behind the camera. It has led to countless jobs for our participants. We just launched a disability loop group. Voiceover opportunities, including Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, where I play Lego Spider-Man in that movie. It is a small role, pun intended, uh, in the movie. No, but it is, uh, it is truly amazing that the challenge is creating all these opportunities. So we have two rooms filled with people learning about this year's challenge. Today, we are going to get an uh, opportunity to listen to judges about what they're looking for. So if you have questions, this is an interactive forum where you could ask me, you could listen to judges. So whether you're on the live stream, hit us up in the chat. If you have questions, maybe write them down or, or think about them or raise your hand because we want to hear from you. We want this to be interactive. We want to answer your questions about registration, uh, anything related to how you would find your crew, uh, what kind of prizes you would get, what the rules are like. Can you work with sag after talent? Yes, you can work with sag after talent Can you make a film? Yes. What if I can't find my crew? You can find it, all right? Ultimately, I've been very lucky. I've been a comedian and actor for over 20 years. But the majority of my work has been self-driven with me writing, producing, creating my own content. Because look, I, I'm three foot 10. And no one was going to write me in to play the gangster, so I had to buy my own pinstripe suit. <laughs> But ultimately, we have the ability to make our own content, to play the roles we want to play, to create this opportunity. And I'm so honored that so many participants, people with and without disabilities, have been able to do this through the film challenge. It's an opportunity where you make a film. And for those of you that are tuning into the live stream that are new to what the challenge is, step one, you need to register. You need to go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com. It'll walk you through all those steps. It's going to walk you through how you register. It'll walk you through the timeline. Uh, registration goes from now until April 1st. The challenge is April 2nd to April 7th. And during those five days, you will make a film based on our assigned genre, which we announced is buddy comedy. So it's a very fun assignment, but don't start filming yet because you're not going to get the full assignment until the start of the challenge. That's where you're going to learn about the themes, the props, the locations that you have to incorporate into your film so that we know that these films were done over the course of five days. Now, this today is an opportunity for you guys to, one, meet each other, okay? We have talented filmmakers. You're going to hear from winners of the challenge, people that are amazing, talented, disabled creators. They're going to give you advice. They're going to give you tips on how they were able to put their films together. But again, if you're feeling overwhelmed at any time, just, you know, as David Zimmerman likes to say, take a deep breath, all right? Uh, take a deep breath and just relax and, and, and know that the talent is out there. The industry is looking to bring people with disabilities in. So again, I, I 11 years ago created the Disability Film Challenge because I wanted other people with disabilities to take their career in their own hands, to not talk about what they want to do and talk about, oh, I'd like to be a writer, actor, or director, editor. No, those, those days are done. We are going to be editors. We are going to be actors. We're going to be directors. We're going to be writers. And we're going to do it. And that's going to happen through the challenge. And year after year, we've had more and more films, more people getting the opportunity to take their careers in their own hands, to be seen by the industry. And it's happened more and more. And it happened that year two of the challenge in a big way when we came here to Performing Arts Studio West and had our first meetup event. And really, it's grown year after year. And then in 2017, I partnered with Easter Seals Southern California. It's now the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. And over 600 films. Wow. Again, now, many of you are thinking about this. Like, well, how am I going to get a team together? Go to your social media. 
say I am registering okay I am I am making a film when you take that first step and you register and you put it out there to your friends your family you email people you put it on social media you contact local schools local people people will want to help you take that first step all right but when you take that first step you're going to allow yourself to be in that opportunity to get your film together now if you're an actor you know sometimes you're going to end up on another team but that could be the opportunity for you to write. Real quick, because I want to bring on in a minute the uh, founder uh, and the executive director of Performing Arts Studio West, John Piazas, in a minute to come up here and talk about the amazing work that is done here uh, at Performing Arts Studio West. But I want to talk real quick about the prizes for this year. I know we're talking all about, we're talking all about, well, oh yeah, we should make a film. But I want to talk about the prizes for a second, because this year we have the best prize package we've ever offered, all right? We have Dell Technologies Computers, Adobe Creative Cloud. We have $2,000 cash grants that are going to go to the each individual winner of our six categories. We have mentor meetings with studio executives. That's right, all the studios, all the networks are a part of this. And for the first time ever, the winners of our best film, best director, best writer, best editor, and our best actor award, those films will each receive $15,000 production grants so that they can continue to develop these winning films into TV shows, into feature films, and bring it to the next level. And beyond that, we have also opened it up so all past film challenge films, all 600 films can submit the films that they already made and, and tell us what they would do with their project to turn it into a feature film or TV show. And they could be eligible for a $15,000 production grant. So the opportunities are out there. This is an opportunity when I come right back after talking to John, I want to hear from questions from the audience that you may have, but first, I have to give a huge thank you again to David Zimmerman, uh, Meet the Biz, and Performing Arts Studio West. Thank you, Performing Arts Studio West, all the staff, all the teachers, all the participants that have welcomed me since the beginning. I'm bringing the man, the myth, the founder, executive director, John Piazas up here. Just a gigolo, everywhere I go. Hey, well listen, we are, we are super stoked to have Nick and everybody from the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge here with us today. And thank you, thank you for being here. This is the most exciting year for uh, this event, I, I think, ever. I mean, God, Nick was explaining to you guys the, the, uh, the prizes that are available, some of the changes that are going on. I love the buddy film thing. I love that. That is going to be absolutely stellar. And uh, we're just so happy to have uh, been involved over the past 10 years with you guys. And thank you all for being here. Performing Arts Studio West is uh, a nationally recognized organization that works with uh, actors, uh, um, training them for with disabilities, uh, intellectual disabilities and developmental disabilities. And we have been uh, working with this population for 25 years. We're having our 26th anniversary coming up in June. Thank you. And, you know, with all of the wonderful friendships and connections that we made, it's just, it, it, this is a one big family, it's one big community, and we're just super, super happy to have you here with us today. Uh, if you guys have, you know, friends or family or individuals that you know that are looking for training in, in acting for film, television, commercials, and theater, uh, music training, dance training, uh, we are regional center funded, and uh, we have the ability to, to help train you guys to get you to where you want to be in your careers. And we are, we are just, we're taking referrals now and that's a wonderful thing. All right, enough of a commercial for PASW. <laughs> but let's get back. All right, what's the next thing? What do we got going on next? Thank Thanks you, Nick, back. thank you, thank you. <laughs> One more time, give it up for John. <laughs> Performing Arts Studio West. Thank you. Thank you. And make sure to check out all the amazing shows that they have, uh, awesome shows, and, and come out here and, and be a part of this program. We're going to cut to a video of our judges 
If somebody has one question about registration, I can answer that. Any, any questions about the registration process? So this is a great question. Uh, the question from the audience was, when I went to register, it took me from one website to another website. That's a great question. So if you go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com and hit the challenge tab, it's going to walk you through all those steps. You're going to learn how to register. And in, in order to do that, you'll fill out an information form. This is t talking about your crew, your cast. Are there any things that we need to know about? And again, It'll, from there, link you to Film Freeway, uh, filmfreeway.com. And from there, uh, you're going to fill out more information about your cast, your crew, and that's where you're actually going to register. At the end of the challenge, you will uh, submit your downloadable film inside there. And that's how we pull that out. Uh, you know, and, and from there, we take that film, and that's also where you're going to want to put information about your film, your cast, your crew, inside Film Freeway. And that's where we want you to put who has a disability that is part of your film. This is very important because now we're getting job requests all the time from casting directors, from studios. And if we don't know who you are and who's part of your film or what their names are, what their disabilities are, it's hard for us to have that on file when opportunities come up or when casting directors look at a film and they want to know a little bit more background. Uh, so make sure to, to announce what you are. Uh, on that note, aside from the challenge, IMDB, who is a sponsor, they have a discovery tool. It allows you to identify that you have a disability. Now a huge thing that I always think is very important is we need to self-identify that we have a disability. There is pride in the word disability. And guess what? There's opportunities because the, the networks, the studios are looking for us. So make sure that you are putting it out there that you have a disability, what it is. Uh, you know, because when you're able to self-identify, that helps the industry be able to find you. But uh, in terms of the registration process, disabilityfilmchallenge.com will walk you through all those steps of how you register, the dates, the timeline, and to complete the registration process, you will do that through filmfreeway.com. Now, some of the questions that we've been getting also have been about, well, how are these films judged? Well, I'm very honored that we have an unbelievable panel of judges. We have people with and without disabilities that, uh, you know, that, that are some of the most acclaimed writers, producers, directors, actors, uh, publicists marketing executives, executives that, that judge these films. And I have an amazing group of judges, including Oscar winners and uh, journalists that are going to give us advice right now and working directors and actors. Uh, so are you ready for some, some advice from the judges? We have four judges and let's hear from them. I'm a judge for the Disability Film Challenge. Hi, I'm Jane Gold, and I'm one of the judges for the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. This is Mark O'Malley from the Disability Film Challenge, and I'm one of the judges. I am Jim Lebrecht, and I'm one of the judges of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. What am I looking for as a judge from the Disability Film Challenge? I'm looking to be entertained, like any other film. You know, I don't think disability changes the want or need to be entertained. I think that's the whole point of film. And so when I judge this movie, do I like it? Did it touch my heart? Did it make me laugh? That's what I'm looking for. What I think is unique about this film challenge and the, and the time crunch and, and the financial limitations is that I find that simplicity is often a real key to having a successful film. When you are focused on presenting a really great concept with really great characters and great acting, that is going to come across, instead of trying to do, you know, Mission Impossible 12, it's sometimes easier to get one really smart, good idea across and execute it very well. And then I always like it when something surprises me. I'm looking for something that really stands out, something that really feels unique. I look for performances that make me look like this. 
But what I'm doing is I'm holding my hands to my lips and going, oh my gosh, I can't be what I'm witnessing. I'm looking for something that makes me laugh. I'm looking for something that really makes me think. And I'm looking for things that I want to say, hold on, you gotta watch this. That helps you. I'm looking at everything, but primarily is the film entertaining Does somebody have a gene? and believable. Does it R make yeah. like the statement it's trying to make? Does it entertain? Uh, Does it say anything? Uh, is it boring? Is it collaborative art? How is the production design? How is the editing? The pacing? What are the shots like? Are they inspired and they help tell a story? Or do they take away, bring me out of the story? Is the acting believable? Has the director guided the actors and made it powerful? Whether it's a comedy or drama or whatever, has it made the impact that it desired to make? Hopefully it did. When looking at a film that has disability in it, what is too much disability for me? I guess what too much is is when that's all they talk about. I feel like disabled people, we have we live and breathe and we love and we and we don't walk around like I'm a dwarf, I don't run around going, Hi, I'm a dwarf, I'm a dwarf. Relate to me through my dwarfness. You gotta relate to me through my dwarfness because I'm a dwarf. So it doesn't always need to be mentioned. Sometimes it maybe needs to be mentioned because it might be funny if it's a good if it's a good joke or if it's the theme that they're being discriminated against and you have to mention it because of that, yes. But like should it constantly be acknowledged no you know it's a, it's a hard question because i know it when i see it and i, I don't have a, a template for what is the appropriate level of disability being involved in your film what i will say is that you know i think we all want there to be a day where disability is irrelevant to film and television and story but this challenge is a chance for people to see the disability community and how we provide a unique perspective and a storytelling that they've never seen before. So I encourage you to, however that manifests, not be afraid of making your disability a central part of the story you want to convey. It doesn't mean that it has to be about disability, but I always like it when I see somebody in one of the challenges expressing a viewpoint that feels unique because of the lived experience they have. Do I look who's in front and who's behind the camera? Absolutely. Because both shape how the movie is seen, it shapes how the movie is made. Decisions are made based on your disability, and I don't mean like they color it, I mean when you're disabled, you have a different lens that you put in front of everything you do, whether you want to or not. And so, yes, I do check that because it's vital to check it. You have to have your story be about a disability to prove that this is a disability component. And I guess I would say that that is not the case. I think that if there's somebody on screen that has a disability, I want that to be at least recognized. We're not trying to be diminished or ignored because it's a part of who we are. But if you're behind the camera, I don't think you need to feel compelled to tell the disability story. You just tell a story. And if that happens to have disabled characters in it, cool. If it doesn't, that's fine too. There's no quota on the more disabled people in my mind. Disabled people I have in the film, like the farther along I'm going to get. It has to be something that feels authentic to the story and doesn't feel forced. That being said, why not have disabled people in your story? Because we're all part of the fabric of society. What I'd like to see for all films going forward is disabled people being integrated into stories. All of them. We're everywhere. So we should be in all movies. We're 27% of the population now. Our, our numbers just went up. It was 26 last year, it's 27 this year. Why shouldn't we be there? We're the largest minority in the world. What I think is so great about this film challenge is that it is the real front line of showing the industry and British society about 
the integration between people with disabilities and people without disabilities, and how the work doesn't have to be, you know, the after-school special about disability, and the work doesn't have to be the best and most positive representation of disability. Disability is just a piece of the fabric that makes up these great stories. And that's what I always want to see is great stories. I want to see people who have a story to tell and watch them execute it well and with authenticity and with heart and with passion. And so I think every filmmaker, every artist wants to tell a story with passion and authenticity. And so the fact that you've got collaborators that have disabilities and, and some that don't all working together for one shared vision is just a, a really beautiful example for the industry that there's no reason that people with disabilities shouldn't be included at all levels of the industry, from the behind the camera and the artistry to the sets and crew to the actors to those you know on the other side in all the boardrooms and in the decision making rooms and the producers and the bean counters and everybody that's involved. We have a right to be there and we have stories to tell. And their stories are so fascinating and oftentimes really like shed a light on a piece of society that often gets overlooked. And that's what we're all looking for. It's something new and fresh and a new way to look at something with a different take. Why am I a judge? I love judging this challenge. I have seen films that have stuck with me ever since I saw them a number of years ago. There are people that I see and that I know take a mental note because this person is extraordinary. The editing, the direction, uh, the stories. We have so many unique ways of looking at the world. And this film challenge really brings out the best in our community. And the fact of the matter is that it doesn't stay within the community. Thank you so much to the judges. We get, uh, we may need one more chair. I, uh, I'm bad at math. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So let's let's start with uh, intro of of who you are, your film that from this year's winning film challenge, and what you did on it. Got the mic, so oh, I'll yeah. start. Let's start here. <laughs> My name is Corey Reeder. I'm writer director of uh, Smasher Pass, starring Josie Scott, that was in last year's um, competition and was nominated for Best Director, Best Film, Best Editor, and Best uh, Actress. We're going a little out of order here with different films, but. Um, and I'm, I'm Judith Rubin. I'm the producer of Leap of Love, which last year won uh, Best Awareness, the Best Awareness category. Woo! Yeah. I'm Josie. I'm an actor. I'm the star of Smasher Pass, and I was nominated for Best Actor last year. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, my name is Chrissy Marshall. I'm a white woman with black hair. I wear a purple shirt that has the ASL alphabet on it. And I am the writer and director of Rain in My Head. So now, this is incredible. Uh, 115 films last year. Uh, many of these people have been a part of the challenge for years, um, but Ultimately, we had four winning films. Uh, the first time it ever happened, Rain in My Head ended up winning, uh, you know, three categories. So that was pretty incredible. Um, overall, can you talk about uh, how long of a process was it for each of you uh, about putting your teams together? And do you have any advice for how you're able to get your teams together for, for individuals that are trying to put teams together right now? Sure. Um, we uh, we made our film from concept to completion in four days. Um, I had I had been percolating on the idea, so I, I was able to write it fairly quick, and then um, went through casting. And luckily, because I'm in LA, and this is my last year was my seventh year participating in the Disability Film Challenge, I already had some camera friends and sound people friends and whatnot, and then. Um, at a last minute 
uh, entry was Josie, who came to save the day and became uh, the star of the film. And so we we wrote it and then shot it on a Friday, edited it on a Saturday, and uh, delivered on a Sunday. I do not recommend that. <laughs> I recommend that you guys take the full allotted time and really enjoy yourselves through the process. It's, it's a lot more fun that way. As far as Nick's question into how to reach out to people, there's resources on Facebook. I would get to um, your Instagram stories and place calls for like, I'm looking for an actor with, this, with a certain disability or I'm just looking for actors or I'm looking for a cinematographer, or, I'm looking for an editor. Look, like put it out there and, and start making phone calls. I know it can be scary and I know it can be strange because you're calling or maybe meeting up with strangers and, and hoping that they're gonna give something to you that's gonna change your life. Um, and some people are gonna say no and that's okay, but people are gonna say yes and you will grow amazing people around you like I'm sure all of us will share in that experience of saying. And in the end, you'll have a great movie that represents your artistic aesthetic and moves the disability needle forward to where it needs to be in the inclusion of, of all media. And well said, well said. Yeah, I mean, geez, let's print that. All right, print. Um, uh, <laughs> So, uh, you know, I guess, and we'll go to you after, but I, f I think since we're talking about this film, we should uh, go to you first, Josie. Um, now, talk about this process. One, uh, you know, because this is going to end up happening as an actor. Some actors are going to get cast almost the night before uh, or very sh short turnaround where they're getting this opportunity. And one thing to point out that I haven't really said these films are shared by the Casting Society of America worldwide. And that is why every year people get hired time after time. And if you're like, well, I don't know, I, I, I don't want to be seen like this, or the, the casting directors, the industry knows that you're not getting the same amount of time as uh, you know, a normal film process or TV process. So they keep that in mind. but. With that being said, as somebody who has been in a lot of TV shows, there, you're also getting your scripts a lot of times the day before, the night before, in you know, in TV shows. Uh, so that part of it is is very much uh, the same. But can you talk about uh, what was that process like, getting cast, coming on board, and then having it be something where you ended up being nominated for best actor? Uh, you've been brought in from you know, casting directors have wanted to meet with you, and your film just screened at. Slam Dance, Slam Dance Film Festival. So, talk about uh, the process and what this whole journey has been like from getting brought on and just the whole journey. Yeah, so this was my, last year was my first year doing the Disability Film Challenge ever. So I came into it with no expectations like at all. And um, I was lucky enough to get connected with Corey, I think like the week before the challenge started. Um, and he was like, I have this crazy idea about a woman dating with a disability and I wanna bring in the concept of a devotee. And I was like, okay, that's a little <laughs> controversial, but like I'm down, let's do it. So I got the script, I think like two days before we shot and we had like one zoom rehearsal with one of the guys that I was going on the dates with so it really was kind of just like jump right in on shoot day and I'm somebody who likes to have a lot of like rehearsal and practice so that was something I kind of had to grapple with in my mind of like okay like I can do what I can with my character but I just have to show up and be present and be ready for whatever the day throws at me and we did, I think, three or four locations that day. And it's it's not a normal like filming situation at all. So I think I just had to like let all of my preconceptions go and just enjoy the process, which I really enjoyed working with Corey and I had a great time. And as far as getting connected with, you know, teams as an actor or as a filmmaker, I am a huge proponent of connection through social media because we're in a day and age where we have the world at our fingertips. Like we can connect with somebody just, you know, by typing something. And so like search for filmmakers in your area, whether it's LA or if you're, you know, signing on remotely, just try to connect with people that way. It's very, very helpful. And and can you also talk your, your she's part of the Rolettes here oh, yes. as well, the dance, <laughs> dance yeah. team. Um, so, also yes. an amazing dancer and 
you know, so there are other avenues too. Just I'm just saying that too, just to think through. There are other ways, if you're a filmmaker, where you're like, I can't find someone with a disability. There is more talent with disabilities out there uh, than, than we all, like, there, that is not an excuse for this or for anything else. So the talent is there in so many other avenues, and I just want to say that that's uh, amazing, too. So that's something else that wasn't incorporated in this film, but another thing to think about is, for me, like I'm a swimmer, I would just be a lifeguard, you know? Obviously, I wouldn't recommend doing that in a short film where you only have a couple days, but <laughs> could you incorporate some other thing that people have in part of your film to add production value? So I just wanted to kind of throw that out as well. Um, now we're going to you here, our winner of our best awareness campaign. Now before uh, we have you talk about the process of putting your film together, I didn't really explain the awareness campaign. So real quick, we told you about our main categories of best film, director, actor, writer, editor. We also have a best awareness campaign. This happens the weekend after the challenge, Saturday, April 13th. Every single film will go on our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram page. And our participants will try to get as many likes, views, and shares for their films and get as much press coverage and as much attention for the films. So the goal of the challenge is to create opportunities for participants in front of and behind the camera. But guess what? Those opportunities come with exposure. If the, if the world doesn't see us, they don't know how to find us. So the awareness campaign is where we end up getting all the jobs every year. So this is an opportunity to showcase your work. As artists, we don't want to share. I never, I've been doing comedy 22 years. I never share my stand-up online. I'm like, eh, I'll share in a little bit. Well, with the challenge, you have the opportunity because it forces you to put your film live. You can always do color correction and other, you know, director's cuts later and things like that. But this is an opportunity for you to put your work out there. And we've had thousands of views. And we've had people that have gone on to really get jobs because of the awareness campaign. And with that being said, we have the winner of the awareness campaign right here. Can you talk about that process and uh, you know, putting together such a great cast and crew and how you were able to get so many people to share your films? And then uh, I'd like to, after that, know about that new exciting project that you guys uh, have, have uh, that you're just working on as a result from after the challenge. Sure. Well, so there's a there's a tie between best awareness campaign and putting your film together, and I'll tell you what it is. And that is, each of us has a circle around us of people that you're connected to, who do something that you need for the film, and they need you. And there are people who are invested in you in your life that you don't even think about that way, but they are, and they're watching your life on social media, and they're engaging with you in all of those ways. So if you think about that circle and, and reaching out to those people to, to work on your film and to work with you, that's, that's part one. So we were two families that put this film together and we, our two families had these circles of people that we could reach out to. It's, you know, I'm, a, I'm an old stage mom of an actor with a disability, so I've been around Video Village for a long time. I've, you know, we, we've made connections that way. We knew other actors from doing that. And the other family that we were working with had similar situations. We had our director as a, a well-known actor who had lots of people that she could reach out to. So there, within all of you and within your network, there are people that you can work with to create your film. So you really have to take, take a look at your network. That's, that's number one. In terms of awareness, we also had, I have to be very honest with you, some very savvy late stage millennials uh, on our team who really understand social media and how it works. But the, the marching orders to the rest of us were to be relentless in sharing, in talking about your film, in asking people to share your film, engage communities like, you know, there are um, disability community organizations that you can reach out to to share your film on their platform, whether it's respectability or other kinds of organizations that would be willing to share your film. So this is really about putting yourself out there um, and being willing to reach out and talk about what you're doing and um, sharing what it means to you and being authentic and genuine in doing that. So, um, yeah. Well, I, you know, I have a question. So uh, it seemed like you guys had a lot of content and I've seen other filmmakers. 
What, did you shoot extra content that you wanted, uh, you know, during your shoot to have for social media that you could run during the campaign? Or, or can you talk yeah, about uh, any ideas that came up from yeah, those millennials? Yes. Um, so, so yeah, Sarah Ginley, who is our writer, and Madison McLaughlin, our director, um, were very proactive and very thoughtful about shooting extra content while we were during the during the challenge that would later be used. And we, they set up an incredible Instagram account that was very shareable and very funny um, and, and kind of had the tone and the wit of the film. So uh, I think that's incredibly good advice to be thoughtful when you're shooting about what stories do you want to tell within the story that other people might want to share. And you know something else that I think is very interesting and amazing about your film was the diversity of different disabilities that were in within the film. I always think that too. If you if you have for me as a little person, if I was in the film, you could reach out to other little people, little people of America. Uh, there's if there's uh, sub organizations, the college I went to, okay, Temple University, the places I you know my high school, the local paper. Did you do any stuff like that? Or it just seemed like, you know, I mean, would you, any advice that just, this is a time, and including from others on the panel, because I know every one of you here are, happen to be also amazing at social media. Well, you know, our family is like pretty enriched in disability life. Um, and we know many other, like many other families and we're really in the community. And that's why you see the diversity of people with the disabilities in, the, in our particular film. But I think that that, that is probably true for, um, other for other folks on the panel who um, are part of disability culture that you don't just know within your own <laughs> cadre of, of disability, but you know other folks, but I'd love to. Yeah, I, I Josie or, or Christy, do you have any thoughts about uh, like how you're both, the two of you happen, although everybody here is, is good at social media. I mean, you guys are both great at content and making stuff relatable, whether it's for the challenge or in general. Can you talk about things that you've seen or, or ideas for people of how they can uh, really reach people uh, through an emotional connection through uh, social media? I feel like the disability community has a lot of nuanced experiences that a lot of people just absolutely have no idea about, whether that comes to physical, physical therapy or otherwise, like, we have so many experiences that have never been showed on screen before. Uh, so for me, that was very important. And I'm always trying to find something in my own life that I am positive other people will relate with, but also is real and authentic and as raw as possible. Um, and then when it comes to telling the story, you just have to be as tenacious as you possibly can. Um, and for me, I always come from there, our community has such a lack of representation and there's such a desperate need for better representation. Um, I always feel an urgency and want to show people new stories. Um, and, and with that too, you know, it, it really came across with your film uh, in the fact that, you know, one, it won three awards. There was a connection to it. It felt very, uh, you know, tapped in. And I saw a lot of people sharing too. You had the LGBTQ plus community uh, that was, you know, brought within uh, the deaf community. Uh, just, you know, in general, uh, it, there was a lot of subcultures, you know, and I think that's what I love about disability in general is that we intersect amongst all other underrepresented populations. So uh, one, I love that. Uh, two, I just, this isn't a question, I just want to kind of make a statement, uh, but it's pretty wild how many people, you know, Phil Lord, uh, Oscar winner of, you know, Spider-Man Across the Spider, all these people, you know, sending messages about your film, executives bringing you in uh, for your film. So the film really did make a connection. Um, can you talk about advice? Now this year, it's a little different than uh, last year. Last year was romance. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think even with buddy comedy, mm -hmm. can you talk about uh, being intentional about finding some, uh, a way to make a connection with your, the material and the project? Well, most people have a notes app, right? When you see something that hits you in the heart, write it down and don't forget it and keep it because 
didn't matter. Um, brewing in my head, there's a few things. Um, so uh, my main actor, Sophia, amazing. Just phenomenally talented. I worked with her one time, and I was like, I'm going to work with her again because this is the most talented actor I've ever met. Like, just emotionally, her ability to channel her feelings and expressions is just so powerful. I other say, has anybody seen the movie Drive My Car? Most people have it, but it's um, a Korean Japanese film that ran right in my head is partially homage to um, because they incorporated sign language and that physicality. Um, and I knew with my growing up with less access to language, I wanted to focus on the beauty of language. Um, and how they did it told me it was just a perfect way to do it. Um, and then uh, I'll also mention, I wrote, there was probably four, four more minutes of writing that didn't go into the final cut. Uh, I had to listen to other people's feedback to tell me, you know, not everybody needs to hear your full story of nuance, details, like you only need the important part. Um, and but as an artist, it was really hard for me to be like, oh, I have to delete this, but this explains why like my parents didn't learn sign language or things like that. Um, but ultimately, it's really important to listen to other people around you and take their feedback, if, if it's good feedback, not all feedback. <laughs> um, but that, that's yeah. very important, too, to mm -hmm. think about. This is, this is great advice for people because, again, at the end of the day, you have five days. So we all want to film, you know, you know, countless shots and all this coverage. And we want to film 10 pages and these long, you know, setups and all these different things. Well, guess what? You have to edit this. So the other side is listening to your, your peers. This is really designed to be a collaboration. And where you're going to get your jobs is through those that you collaborate with. So I think that's great advice to, one, listen to your peers and to be willing to uh, make edits and say, hey, even though we want to film everything, we may have to do this as a pickup for something else at a different time and film this now. And I know Corey uh, <laughs> could talk about that for, and, and, and Josie, I mean, you, uh, you guys came down to the wire on your edit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, to Chrissy's point, it, we call it killing your darlings when there's the things that you just don't want to let go of as a creative, but you have to either to fit in the timeline, because this is only a five minute movie, or even though it means it's important to us, maybe truly it's not important to the overall story. And what you're trying to deliver is a good story. And if you film too much, if your script is too long, I am notorious for having ambitious scripts that are six or seven pages. The rule of thumb is that one page of script equals one minute of screen time. So if you have a seven page script, that should be a seven page or seven minute movie. But the film challenge is only five minutes. So set your goals appropriately. And here's the best advice I could give on that is the simplest way to write a story is make sure you have a good beginning, a good middle, and a good end. So you introduce your characters, you introduce the problem, you have them face the problem, and then you have the, the end, the, the solution, the wrap up, or the tag. So we have a buddy comedy this year is the challenge. So you need to introduce your buddies. You need to introduce whatever your buddies are gonna face that either makes them buddies or pulls them apart and then you're gonna have to bring them back together or have them achieve something together in the end. That's a, it's, a, it's a very simple structure and what you can do within that, the possibilities are infinite. But set your goals appropriately, five pages. And to the production aspects that Nick was mentioning, I would say this, you don't need big movie cameras, you don't need huge crews and all these sorts of things. I know a lot of people out there, this might be your very first movie. You can shoot a movie on this. There's a cinema mode in iPhones. I don't know if they have them on Samsungs, but you can make your movie look really cool with this. Like Josie mentioned, and Nick did too, our film got to screen at the Slamdance Film Festival this year. 
up in Park City at the same time as the Sundance Film Festival is going on. And us being able to go to that festival, we saw a whole bunch of different movies. And I saw some movies that looked like they were shot on a flip phone in these festivals. Sometimes it doesn't matter how your film looks or how great your cinematography is. What matters is a good story. So my rule is always make it good on the page. Because if you have a really good written script, even if it's a little too long like Chrissy's or like I tend to do, you can always edit it out in post-production. But just be mindful of your goals and you'll have a great film, hopefully. So we are almost at time. Uh, and I'm going to bring uh, Diana Elizabeth Jordan up to set up. Because uh, during the break with live stream audience, we want you to come back in an hour to learn from amazing creatives uh, with disabilities that are going to give further advice. Uh, I want to just any last bits of advice and tell us what's next for, for each of you. Uh, be, oh. be tenaciously authentic as you possibly can. Just look into the deepest parts of yourself and those are where the most important stories are. Um, I have a million things of advice I could say, um, but that's probably the most important thing. Um, <laughs> I have a billion things going on now <laughs> in creating, so I can't really sum that up, but... Um, Where can people uh, follow you? Follow you on, online? Oh, yeah. I'm cr at Chrissy Marshall on Instagram and TikTok and all the social media, um, and I'm constantly creating, so you'll see more of my work there. My last piece of advice is just to like listen to the world around you. If you're kind of at a loss for, you know, maybe a funny situation or a plot for your movie, just like go out in public and listen to people's conversations because I can't tell you how many times one of my friends have like told me a story or I've heard something funny on the street that have like sparked an idea in me. So just listen to the world around you. Um, you can follow me at Josie Scott. And as to what's next, um, I have a couple things that are in production and post-production, so hopefully I can share more about that soon. Um, I have one piece of practical advice, and that is don't, don't continue to edit on Sunday morning. Finish <laughs> on Saturday <laughs> night. It takes a long time to upload the films, you guys, a long time. Okay, so that's a um, little practical tidbit. Um, working uh, right now, um, I produced a film for um, Allison Norlian, who is the writer-director of 13, which um, stars uh, my daughter, Naomi Rubin. You can follow her at Naomi Rubin Official <laughs> on Instagram. And um, it's a story of profound disability and um, religious life and um, being included in re religious life. So, uh, and it's on the um, Disability Film Challenge IG page if you wanna know more about the film. That's right. That's another example too. A film challenge judge ended up, uh, you know, creating a film and, and going through the challenge, the database that is the challenge and being seen. So at, I was very proud and excited about that. Um, I am currently looking for a female screenwriter with a disability to team me up to turn Josie and mine's film Smasher Pass into a feature film. We will write that as far as authenticity is. I think it's very important to make sure since it's a female protagonist that it's not a white straight dude writing that character. Um, so I want to team up with somebody for that. So uh, that is happening. I have another film that I am uh, developing, hopefully to go into production this year with Kurt Yeager, who is a uh, Disability Film Challenge, uh, what was, he's been a judge, he's been a participant, he's been something, he's, he's been everything, <laughs> he's, a, he's a great guy. So we're developing something together, and uh, you can find me uh, on Instagram through my business account, RM. P L L C that is for Renaissance man productions, my company. And, uh, I'm on the Facebooks. I'm on the, the Twitters. Just look for Corey reader. Or you can reach out to me, Coreyreader.com. And I will say this. Um, if you want to shoot me an email, if you find me, uh, I'm not participating this year, but I'm happy to help. So shoot me a message and, uh, I'll gab your ear off. There we go. Um, this year, the co conversation is buddy comedy. Disability inherently makes people uncomfortable. So please, like personally, I'm just really hoping people are telling the jokes that everyone is scared to laugh at and have fun with it. Uh, there's so many options 
in such a world that's ready for that. So, yeah. That's a great, that is a great segue. And Diana, why don't you come up here as, as we're talking about that. But, but this is something that's very important to discuss. Comedy should be uh, in the same discussion with disability. You should not be afraid to include, come on up, Diana. Diana Elizabeth Jordan. Winner of 2016 Best Actor. She was nominated for Best Director, and she was a part of Smash Your Pass, the cast here. So, uh, but I, that is very important to, to, to not get scared to, to go there with comedy, but authentically, okay? So that's the other part of it. Include somebody with a disability, you know, in that writing process, be a part of it. But, but to go there through comedy. Now, for me, my, my, where can you find me? At Nick Novicki and at Disability Film Challenge. And if you want to see a group photo that we're all going to take together, because those of you that know me know I like to have a nice full photo of everybody, go to at Disability Film Challenge. That's where you're going to find today's group photo. But before we watch these films, and if you have questions, send them to us. We'll answer those questions. Diana, why don't you... Uh, set up what we're about to see. Hello, everybody here. Woo! Hello, everyone online. I am Diana Elizabeth Jordan. As um, Nick said, I had the pleasure of being best actor. Um, in 2016, I was nominated for best director in 2018, I believe. And um, this is just a great organization. And Nick, is one of the supportive, most supportive people I know. And um, being, being, being a part of this, I've met, I got a new friend last year in Josie. I got a, I had a wonderful friend in Corey, and it's just a great organization. But I'm not here for that. I'm here to introduce the winning films from last year where, where, where the, um, it was romance and so many great films. And these are the four films we're going to see. Rain in My Head, directed by a wonderful Christy Marshall up here. We're going to see Smash Our Pass, starring Josie Scott and directed by Corey Reader. And I think there's someone else in that movie. I don't know. <laughs> That's what I heard. We're going to see Unlucky in Love, with, um, directed by... Um, Katrina Rubin and Stephen, and we're going to see Leap of, Leap of Love, which was directed by Madison M McLaughlin. So guys, I've seen all these films. I know you're going to love them as much as I do. Um, those of you who are online, we're going to stop streaming for a bit, but you can go to um, the You Can See It Challenge YouTube channel and look at the films. We're going to break the lens after that, and then we'll be back at 12.30 with the second half of our day. So thank you. Enjoy some films. We have no popcorn, but have a lot of fun, all right? And, and Diana, Diana is going to be moderating that second uh, panel. So again, right now, we're going we're gonna to stop the live stream. Go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com. Watch those winning films on your own. We'll be watching them. We'll be taking a group photo. So also go to Disability Film Challenge, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, to see that group photo. All right, let's get some love to everybody that you've seen up here. And for these winning films. So growing up, you know, I could feel lonely in the hearing community with my identities, you know. So TV really was my friend. When I watched TV, I didn't see any representation, though. So I would see, like, one deaf person on TV and when that happened, I'd feel so inspired, and I just want to see more of that. So that's what I have been trying to see in TV as the years have gone on, and that's what I want to do as a filmmaker. Really, honestly, for myself as an actor, when I was growing up, you know, I felt isolated and I struggled with that and making friends, and because people would limit me because I'm deaf. And then until I went to a deaf school, I made deaf friends, and I learned how to act, and I learned how to, you know, portray all these different characters that I was acting in. And I was a little bit 
undecided because as I was watching TV and film, I didn't really see a lot of deaf roles being made in these productions. But really, when a director came to me during high school and he asked me if I wanted to become an actor in a certain role, you know, it was really unexpected. So during the filming process, I realized how much fun it was and how much learning happens during that process. And I really started to feel more and more inspired throughout the production. And really, you know, I thought it was only filming, but it was really the, when a studio had called me to get involved and audition more, that was where I started my whole journey. And it led me to love and be more involved in productions. And I'm hoping that's where it can kind of open the door to allow different people with disabilities in Hollywood so that everyone has an opportunity to rise. So um, even though I'm not really, even though my first expertise wasn't uh, film, was the filmmaking, but more about animation. And for me, I've always loved um, animation ever since, ever uh, as far as I can remember. And definitely, the reason why I really love cartoons so much is due to the vibrant of colors of that the characters, the expressiveness, the colors, the shapes and sizes that they have. They are definitely a school of emotions to help me relate. As an autistic person, they help me relate to emotions with their exaggerated faces that they have instead of looking at the uncanny looks of uh, realistic people. It's about, it teaches me to be happy, to be sad, or to be mad, because um, and animation is definitely what is, was, is, is my key. It's my gateway of um, learning how to tell, learning how to help me um, tell stories, not just about the animation process, but also for filmmaking. And um, who, who actually inspired me was a good, I have one memory of a little, of a elementary school friend of mine that, that used to do a show and tell about, on his show and tell, he used to do these picture books about his Lego adventures. Yeah. So this really inspired me to do something more than just, um, than, than just books, book telling. So I went on to do more than just uh, storytelling and doing, doing primitive software before animation software like Adobe Photoshop, MS Paint, and Photoshop. And the more I, and with the repetition I did, the, and with so much repetition, this really wants me to, inspire me to do more not just to inspire me to do more and evolve from the primitive software I use. So the rest is history for me. And what really, and what really drove me to become like an animation filmmaker is because people on the autism spectrum are so long have been not being represented very much, whether in live action or animation. And that's why I, that's why I get the help. That's why I started my company, Dinimation Entertainment, when I was 14 years old, by helping educating, elevating, empowering people with their diversities and other disabilities how to turn their passion in animation into a career. But besides, animation is not just about drawing things. There's many different types of fields of animation. There's writers. There's voice actors. There's some editors, musicians, any field that can suit. Animation can go hand to hand with filmmaking. What inspired me to be a creative? I mean, I feel like I came out um, just a kid, you know, a neuro neurodivergent brain, um, always sort of preoccupied with art and colors and textures. Um, I was really early on drawn to film. Um, by the time I was seven years old, I was watching horror movies, and I knew I wanted to make film. Um, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I just knew like I would have, I have to be there. I have to be one of those people behind the camera, um, because that just seems like a fun thing to do every day as your job. Um, I can't believe they get paid to do that. Um, and so, I just you know since since I could, I I had a camera in my hand. Um, I started with photography, and then. Um, I gradually um, transitioned to video, and I've always been most comfortable behind the camera. Um, and and you know a big reason why documentary was so imperative, and why so much of my work takes place in documentary, is because um, there's just not enough stories that represent the people whose communities I come from authentically. Um, and the repercussions of that are real. 
they have real financial implications and social implications for people within my communities and other people outside of my communities so it's really important that me as a cinematographer hold that lens and capture that beauty and that importance so that that can emanate out into other communities and we can actually take up the space that that it that we should be so I've always been similar to Danny and Nazreen and some of my other fellow panelists like I've wanted to be in this business since I was a kid and I grew up in Massachusetts and I didn't have any ties to this business and so you know Steven Spielberg was was an inspiration for me like watching E.T. as a kid and how emotionally effective that movie was I didn't understand why I wanted to do it I just knew that I needed to to find this business or really be a part of it so when I was 10 my uncle gave me a VHS camcorder um, and uh, and I just started making little things with my cousin um, with my friends and with my dad and so just kind of learning visual storytelling and then I would volunteer at my local cable access studio and learn how to edit when it was like reel to reel and tape to tape it shows you my, my age um, but uh, but you know, it really wasn't until film school um, when I realized like, oh wait, I can actually do more with my storytelling abilities. And at that point it was just for entertainment purposes. I was like, I just wanna make a movie. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know how important it could be to, to make, a, make a film. I um, mean, it really wasn't until the Disability Film Challenge in 2018 um, when I joined for the first time and I realized um, in, through, through my team, we, we ended up winning best film in that in that year. Danny Gomez, who's here as well, it was his first competition as well. That was the film that we met on. Um, and I learned, I just heard, I just heard, heard him. Um, <laughs> but you know, something that I learned through that process, because I'm able-bodied, um, but I've been surrounded by disability my whole life in my family. My dad and his whole side has been hard of hearing. My cousin is neurodiverse. And so, um, but that was just the fabric of my life. It wasn't something that I felt any sort of activism or advocacy. It wasn't anything that I ever did anything with other than lived, lived within my family. When I did the film challenge and we won, I was thrust into this position of being on panels and learning statistics and how horrible the employment statistics are. Nazreen touched on this a little bit too, that you know, 25%, as, as I'm sure many here know, 25% of the population has a disability, whether it's unseen or seen, out of that, around 3%, I know it, it's been creep, creeping up slightly, um, around 3% um, are, uh, are employed in the entertainment industry, especially on screen. Um, and out of that 3%, 95% are able-bodied actors portraying a disability that they don't have. And so suddenly it was occurring to me how important it could be in order to cast people both in front of the camera and behind the camera with disabilities um, because the employment statistics are so low and because I work in the industry as my profession, I'm, I'm the head of production at Fox Sports Original Program, and that's what I do for my day job. Um, as a filmmaker and, and as someone that wants to do this with my life outside of my job, I realize this is what I can do. I can, I can help, I can actually um, cast people in front of and behind, and through those opportunities, um, you know, give other people opportunities. Like Megan Clancy, who's in the front row here, we've worked together a lot. Um, she was nominated as Best Actress at the Sydney Science Fiction Film yeah. Festival um, a few years ago. And, you know, giving people an opportunity like Megan and Danny and, and countless of my friends that came through this competition. I mean, Diana, you and I have worked together before. Um, I really feel like we have a responsibility as filmmakers, as storytellers, um, to change the narrative and um, and put these stories um, front and center to give people the experience. Okay. I, uh, Carol kind of answered it already, how long he's been involved, but for the other um, people on the panel, how long have you been involved in the ECCO Disability Film Challenge? Was it in the 11th the year this year? Well, part of this particular competition. So we'll start with you, Michael, and then we'll go, how long have you been part of the ETC Disability Film Challenge? And what inspired you to be a part of this particular challenge? 
I think this is my third year, fourth year technically, but third year that I've been in it. Now the competition for me is more about seeing the, the progress uh, of myself becoming a better filmmaker, learning about myself, learning about all the amazing people around me, individuals with disabilities, sharing their experiences in making film. I'm really learning a lot through this process and I feel that this is an amazing thing to get people with disabilities together to share different techniques and methods to make film. It's exciting. So that's why I'm here and I'm learning to be the best actor and performer I can be. For me, last year was my first time and this year will probably be my second time really. So. I'm new to this and really, you know, I was kind of off the track for a minute, but now I'm back here and this year wanting to, you know, show up as my second time here. So last year, same as Brian, uh, we had a film called For the Disability Film Challenge. Um, we had our film and it was really a project that they called me to audition for. So when I showed up, I went through it and they started filming this week. They let me know so fast everything was going by. And I wanted them to explain to me what it meant really, the whole challenge, and it's really to represent people with disabilities who have talent and skill, and I've never seen that before. And so I really just found out about it last year. Even though it's the 11th year. Even though it's the 11th year. And really, it was amazing to see how many people with disabilities who are so talented in all these different fields regarding film and production. And really, I'm hoping, you know, this year it will be our second year participating. So I have been part of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge for the past uh, four years, with first starting with um, our Animated Minds in 2020, the, the Home Office, which won for Best Editor in 2021, followed by the other film called um, Supernatural Supreme and then Star-Crossed Destinies. What's so amazing about the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge is the experience, it's really about the friendships and the experiences when you get to know the person who is, you not only get to know their strengths and weaknesses, but also the friendships that you build up through the, throughout the five day challenge. And I really enjoyed that. And plus, after winning for Best Editing, this has opened so many doors for many people, This not just for me, but everybody that gets these opportunities like this. And whenever you, winning is an icing on the cake, but the great, but the biggest benefit about the film challenge is the experience and things that you've learned. I've been making films for about um, 12 years. I think I've been doing the challenge films for about four. And I think the, the best thing about them is meeting new people, new collaborators, and finding out like what you can do as a creative under large amounts of pressure, um, you know, and very, very defined boundaries um, and time. There's not, you know, there's, there's a lot of decisions you have to make which is great. It's um, it's great to to figure out areas that you're strong in and areas that you need to refine. Um, but my favorite part about it is meeting people who can even under stress can keep calm and still enjoy the process of filmmaking. Yeah. So I, I started in 2018 with the Disability Film Challenge. I've done it every year since. Um, to echo uh, what other people have said, I think the experience itself, um, the, the challenge of making a film in, in five days um, already is, is unique. Um, you know, something I feel like it's already hard enough to make a film, so let's make it even harder on ourselves and do it in, in five days. Um, but I think the expectation is, and I've, I've competed in other film challenges as well, um, the expectation is, Films are not going to be good that are made in that amount of time. And I think proof time and time again through, through Disability Film Challenge um, can show you that films can be made that are of very good quality. And I know, at least from my personal experience, and I know from other filmmakers who've competed, these films don't just live within the competition. Yeah, they get made for the competition, 
But once they're made, those films go all over the world. They've been in other film festivals, and they get seen by a much wider audience. So, um, so I think that's really one of the biggest things for me as a, as a filmmaker, and how the film challenge specifically has affected me, is that it allows me not only to meet new collaborators and, and create new friendships, and, and uh, I'm very grateful for that, but also creating a, a body of work that can go and travel and get you know, me and other people to be able to talk about these things. Because one of the things that we do in our filmmaking team too is we don't cast people with disabilities for the sake of them having a disability. We cast people as actors and as characters where the disability doesn't even come into the storyline. And I think that's also a big part of what you see in a lot of these film challenge films. And the first film I ever saw you had done with Corey Reader where you played a detective, Diana, really kind of made it um, real for me where I'm like, oh, you don't have to cast a disability. It, I didn't realize you couldn't you could do that until seeing your performance in that film. I don't remember the name of it, um, but that really inspired me to get involved in the in the competition. Oh, thank you. All right. Good. <laughs> question that kind of allows me to go on to the next. So Phoebe, you talked about the challenge of making a film within a five day period. So what I want to know from you to be either the actor, cinematographer, how do you prepare yourself to get ready? Because you know, like how you said, making a film is challenging in and of itself. Now you have a finite time where you have to write, produce, and have it ready to be submitted by a certain time and that's part of the competition. So how do you guys, and we'll go around this way this time, so that we go, what do you need to do to prepare yourself for that Finite hours of a, of a, you can see a disability Um, try and sleep as much as possible, I would say. Uh, preparation is key. What's, what I find fascinating about these film challenges is, um, you know, because the requirement is everyone has to be a volunteer, um, invariably the week before somebody falls out or drops out because of either a paid gig or something else that comes out. And so you have to be very flexible. You have to be ready to change and move um, and be very fluid um, in your process. Yeah. So, you know, I think you can prepare as much as possible, like with any other project that takes a longer period of time. But what I will say is the real benefit of that, and the real benefit of doing a film challenge that only gives you a certain amount of time, is no matter whether you're making a, a feature film or a TV show or whatever, every decision gets made at the last second. It always, it's always like wait until the last second to make a decision. Once you compress that time period, it doesn't give you the opportunity to hem and haw and wonder like, is this gonna be the right thing, is it not? It almost becomes an instinctual decision that you have to make um, and allows you, and something I can say from my experience doing the film competitions, is it's made me a better filmmaker. It gives me an opportunity to try different things. It, again, that expectation level for a film challenge is that it may not be as good quality as something else, but again, that's been proven time and time again not to be true. And I find that because of my experience through the film challenges, going to the, I call it going to the filmmaker gym, that it gives me the opportunity to try new genres, try different things, be able to experiment a little bit. And again, that's where that sort of fluid um, and flexibility really comes into play, that throughout the entire process, we, would, we can write something, the next day we're shooting it and the actor doesn't really feel the, the script that's been written that way. So we'll, we'll kind of play with different lines and then you get into edit and it's like, well that's not working, you figure it out. Every step of the way, keeping that kind of fluid and flexibility mindset can only, can only help you. So do you know, as a, as a thing of a tag of because I would imagine getting the, the camera, the camera shots and having to do that and get a day in that finite time. What helps you? What is that process like for you? For me, the, the, the process, it, you know, time like is working against you in that sense. And I swear, my body like becomes a machine. So I'm like, okay, what does this body need to survive? 
what kind of fluids and, and food and protein um, and sleep. Um, and what I try to do is, is, is bond with folks uh, as much as possible before the filming actually begins. Because you're not making this film alone. You're making this film as a collective organism. Um, and the more that we can be on the same page before filming starts, the better. So that when filming starts, we all just become this like gear that's in continuous motion until we can get it done. Let, let me ask you, well, for you, because you collaborate so much with the director, what is a good thing that you need from your director that helps you as far as, you know, what can he see that he say that really helps you as a cinematographer because you don't have a lot of pre-production time? The, the best thing that helps me move and quickly is referencing films that we've both seen and like a certain shot um, or going for a certain particular like texture or color or feeling. That really helps me move more quickly. Great, thank you. And then it's you as the editor and the filmmaker. What, what are, what, how did you, again, pardon me, work in a film where you have that finite period of time? Well, it's not just about the entire editing process, but the entire, but the entire production process as a whole. So what we do as um, as what as to add what the previous and present previous panelists would say, I would say definitely plan ahead. So what Sandy and I what we do is that we we come up with a story ourselves first of what the based upon the theme, and then what we do next is that we coordinate meetings via Zoom to meet some of our some of the um, the past members who are. Who, that we've known of who has really great, we coordinate based upon what are their greatest strengths, what's their weaknesses, are they great at writing, are they great at uh, music, are they great at voice acting, are they great at animating. So then uh, once we find their strengths and weaknesses, we, port, we put together a schedule ahead before the challenge. Putting it together a production schedule is crucial because that way people can get prepared, can get prepared before, can get prepared on what to expect. Brian and um, you guys have actors because you know we don't because a lot of the times they work on our bat <laughs> or you be like here do it so how do you prepare as an actor when your time is it's almost like you're preparing for a set tape only you're actually shooting the film so what are some tips on how you guys prepare as actors because I, you were so amazing. And um, your film last year, so how do you prepare for that album? Well, um, it's funny because really, before this, I was used to kind of having a cast prepare, and like we had plenty of time to really get together, and you know, that was still a challenge, but really with this, once I got the script, I was like, okay, I have to prepare myself internally, really read through the script, and I need to find time to meet with everyone to find the expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm ignoring all my other priorities so that I can get this all straighted out and sorted. And kind of like you said, having Zoom meetings with people to discuss the expectations and prepare as much as possible. And really, I was very impressed with how smooth the whole process was. And I really tipped my hat to, to the team I was working on. And for myself, really getting the script down so I can really embody that character as quickly as possible. So really, my point is prepare as much as possible. No, so for me, too, there's two things. You know, I'm not really acting right now. I work mostly as a director, producer, and an advisor, consultant. And really, with my experience, getting a script so last minute, it's hard for the ASL translations that I have to do. I have to figure that out and translate those so fast. And really, it's not easy to you know, translate from English to ASL that quickly. And you know, as a manager and producer, it's kind of like what everyone else is saying, making sure everything's in order, but the additional challenge is the location expectation. So when I show up and I expect a situation to be one way, and then it requires special lighting, or is there something that I don't have equipment-wise, and we have to really be spontaneous and ad-lib ad -lib to make sure 
that we get the outcome we want, but in the end it might not be exactly the same as our original goal. So making sure we always have backup lighting, that is a very important thing to have. That is key. Yeah, one challenge for me is that I don't have a team often. It's just me. I'm the director, or maybe we have one other person who's the director. It's just the two of us, and we're making a film. And so it's like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> you have to accept it or not. That's it. And so things happen, you know. Um, you have to go with it. But the challenge is taking the theme. Nick will send this email and says, okay, so you have to make a theme. It's going to match this book. Go to the library. Oh, my goodness. I have to go to the library and get the book to understand the theme. Uh, I'll never forget that. But it can be a challenge. You have to be flexible. That's, that's really the key for success, flexibility. So we're going to make it, and I really spoke to it a little bit, but I want to um, kind of take a deeper dive. You know, it's a very finite period of time, um, super time. But what are the difficulties, and not only the difficulties, pardon me, but how do you take care of yourself? Because in order to work, we need to take a little bit of self-care thing you need to do throughout the process so you can, you know, go all the way out to that sleep. Or I'm um, not being spoke about making sure that it nourished, but if you can speak a little bit more to that of what you each individually do for your self care so that you can get through this time period. What that would you call it? Sure. Um, so I used to do film challenges without any sleep, and I realized mm -hmm. quite quickly. A, that was not very healthy, and B, <laughs> I might actually die if I don't take care of myself. And so as I've gotten um, more into doing the film challenges, I've realized I have to get sleep. I have to get at least a few hours that first night. So I'll stay up writing, or I'll make sure there is a writer on the project so that I'm not staying up all night, so that then the next day I'm actually a functional director and not, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm still, as, as my actors can attest and my crew, I'm still not 100% with it because I'm pretty tired. But that's also the benefit of surrounding yourself with a, a great team. Um, so I would definitely say that's, that's number one. Staying hydrated, and Nazreen mentioned this, staying hydrated, making sure I have food and fuel, that's, that's really important. And I think that's also part of being, being a part of a team and having other people support you in that. I'll often have a production manager type or a producer person um, that's there on the day making sure lunch is being ordered and that it's being ordered on time so I don't have to worry about that. That I have like a five hour energy waiting for me at any moment because if I start nodding off and it's in the middle of a production, you know, in the middle of a shoot, I, that's not helpful to anybody. Um, sometimes, and, and this has happened on other shoots too, I'll take a production nap, right? It's like I need 15 minutes, I need 20 minutes. They're getting set up for another shot in the other room. We've already discussed it um, through all of our um, discussions and um, I, need to, I need to do that for, for my own sake. So that, that's a huge part of it. And then I think from a preparatory standpoint, in terms of conversations or having Zoom meetings or having conversations where I'm talking to people, being able to, to explain what I need and what needs to happen, being able to communicate that is a huge part of that because then I am able to take care of myself and not feel like I am the one and only person that can make this happen. I have to trust that the other people that are a part of the team are gonna be doing what we've all agreed to so that that sort of organism and gear um, that Nazreen mentioned is, is operating functionally um, because otherwise if it goes off the rails like you may not get the product that you want and, and I do want to just quickly mention one thing about what I mentioned before about that flexibility the first year when when Danny and I did checkmate yeah we we ran out of daylight we ran out of daylight for a scene that was supposed to be continuous and I did not have a solution Right? There was no solution in my brain. We ended up shooting daylight in one scene, the next scene was in pure darkness, and it, it was not gonna make any sense whatsoever. And it was only on the drive home, and it's again, because I had gotten sleep, I had gotten food, that I was able to actually think about a solution that became a, a joke. It became a joke that ended up playing in the film that it was like a three hours later title card <laughs> so that it actually made sense but it, if you're able to kind of get your brain into that way so you can stay flexible by keeping yourself fueled in the appropriate way, 
um, it gives you the opportunity to come up with um, solutions like that. I mean, everything, everything that was just said was is so critical. Knowing what your limits are, I mean, it can be easy because our culture as Americans is to like, you know, work until you drop or, um, you know, give it everything you've got, but then you have to go back the next day and if you don't have anything left, that's going to be an issue. So being able to say, okay, this is, I have about two hours left of brain power or I have about 30 minutes left and so my body's going to drop. So being able to be sort of like a mathematician and be like, where am I going to use this energy? I have a finite amount of energy each day, each hour, um, until my body needs fuel or water. Um, these are things that you need to function. And the film can't function if you're not functioning. So yeah, my best tools on set are not anything metal. <laughs> Surprisingly, it's like, it's food. It's the right food. Uh, because that, that food is fueling you, and you're the creative output. So that's fueling the film. about what you need to do yourself for self-care when you're working on the Ashlyn Hotel. Well, Sorry, you cut out. Um, she's just asking me how I um, do, how I can take care of myself while filmmaking. Well, uh, when it comes to filmmaking, there is a difference between filmmaking when you're doing it in person and the difference between film when you're doing it remotely. For me, remote, doing it remotely is pretty much easy. What I do is just um, get some quick naps whenever you're just um, submitting the film or get at least, I, sometimes I get myself a little stretch or just uh, relax a little bit. Just while you wait, while I'm waiting at the same time when, when you're filming, at the same time when the film is like exporting or uploading. Do it something, it would be great to do some breaks in between. Brian? <laughs> I'm always working out every day because I feel like that's the best way to take care of myself. So, you know, if something shows up last minute, I feel ready. And like you were saying, diet is so important. Taking your vitamins is important. Making sure your body is well taken care of. Sleeping and napping, very crucial. Because if you're not getting enough sleep, your mind isn't functioning at its top level. And really, you know, Overthinking as well can kind of be a negative to your to your functioning. So making sure your, your mind is at its level that it needs to be at so that you can do more of what you need to do. And I'm always trying to know what my you know body is telling me, what my mind is telling me, so that I can fix those things so that I can continue on. I can drink water, I can eat the food that makes me, you know, function and everything is just going as I want it to. I don't have to add much, but definitely bring a comfortable comfort kit, comfort kit. which means, so like for example, if you're going to be outside all day, I bring a hat, a wide brimmed hat, I bring my sunglasses, sunscreen, like maybe a little pillow, you know, to take a short nap on set, you know, maybe a chair, a foldable chair, whatever I need to make sure that I'm comfortable during production. You know, and that's very powerful, and and it can empower people as well. So, you know, when you get home, you can also take the time to relax when you need it. For me, making films aren't actually stressful; they're fun. I have a blast. I enjoy myself. So I, you know, people say, "Are you stressed?" I'm, no, I'm chill. No, it's just the two of us. Last year. For the first film uh, that we uh, made for the challenge, it was just the two of us last year, and so it wasn't a very stressful environment. We were able to knock things out. Yeah, we just cared about film, you know, filming, editing, cut, and we were done. You know, they were saying, "Where's the film? Where's your film?" Okay, soon, soon, we're gonna get it out. You know, but we were able to be done. And that was it. So the conversation is so amazing. I do want to. Um, Go out to the audience for to see if we have any questions online. We need to wrap up in about ten minutes. 
so we're going to be respectful of everyone's time. But if you have any questions, either from the audience or I'm also in the <coughs> chat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I have a question. So I'm trying to get my team together this year, and I'm really struggling <laughs> because, like, do we have to film everything in one day or two days? I'm trying to figure out, you know, when we're trying to schedule with the crew, how to figure that out. And really, the person I'm working with is a professional, and we're trying to get that together. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out what your advice is for how many days we should think of to, to shoot. I remember one year we did like a half day for a couple days, and other days we took more time. So that's my question. Thank you. So I prefer if you're able to shoot the film in one day is good because whether it's the morning, afternoon, or evening, you want to have time for editing because that's a key aspect of filmmaking, and so you don't want to eat up your editing time. So if you can film in one day, and then you have two days for editing and music score, I think that's great. Thank you so much. And I really recommend two days for the first day of filming, once you're finished shooting, and then second day is for cleanups. If you need any pickup shots or any scenes you need to refilm, uh, so two days is way better than one, in my opinion. And you know, as an actor myself, I'm not really involved with all of that aspect of it, so I'll, you know, give it off to the next person to answer. Well, um, what's the question? What's the question well, again? Well, well, um, about how do you prepare in terms of how many days should you shoot and film? Megan has a team we share, yeah. So she just had the questions about Preparation as far as how many days to shoot it for the well, edit? Well, I would say definitely plan a month ahead. So it's also really great to contact with, get in contact with um, people that you know who are great at music, editing, any of the fields. Put a team together and then see if they could be able to join the anime, to join the uh, the film challenge. Definitely join. The, so and then find and then. And you're right that it's also very important. What if somebody drops out, as he mentions? It's always about, it's also staying flexible. What if team members drop out? You just really have to find a backup as well. Nothing. It comes in handy. Nothing, what would you like to add? Um, the last question I heard was, you know, how do you fit everything in into that amount of time? How do you schedule things on time? Um, if, that's the, if that's still the question we're on. Yeah. My, my, my best advice is a producer, a great producer is, is like a foreman on a construction set. They basically take in all the information and they catalyze it and then they create a schedule. And that schedule is a thing of beauty when it works well. And, and your, your producer is sort of, it's sort of like the, you know, the scaffolding that the entire film sits on. Um, so, so a great producer is like, it's worth their weight in gold. Um, yeah, I guess I can add typically what our schedule is, and because I've also done 48 hour film challenges that are literally 48 hours long, because as a working professional I only have a weekend, we spend 12 hours writing, we shoot in one day, hopefully editing is happening simultaneously on top of that, and then um, editing continues into the night. So then, then the next day, uh, I forget who mentioned it, but the day, the day for pickups afterwards, in case you need to do something like that, you have the ability to do that. Now, for the film challenge, you have five days. That doesn't really adjust my schedule that much because again, my, my job requires so much that I can't dedicate too much advanced time creatively. However, it allows you to write longer. Um, and then if you can shoot one day, awesome. Um, if you end up having to shoot two days, again, if you can start the post-production process at the same time as the production process, that allows you the ability to do certain things um, and, and make sure you have the time to, to make the film. Everyone, I think. Yes, yeah, sounds complicated, but thank you. <laughs> I believe we're getting down to five minutes. Is that right, David? I think so, yes. yes. Yeah, we have a, a question for the Thank you to one question online, and unfortunately, we do have to 
wrap up, but I believe that you can also send questions into the challenge if you have them, and hopefully somebody will answer them. So what are the one question? Uh, someone's asking about how an actor can join a team. How an actor can join a team. Um, I, I can start with that. I think it's, um, you can find all the Disability Film Challenge, Challenge films online. You can do it through the website on YouTube uh, because of the, um, the um, promo campaign, the, the promotional campaign. And afterwards, they're all listed on there. What I would do is I would go find the films and the filmmaking teams that kind of you respond to and the ones that you like. Everyone's names typically are in the credits. Um, then do a search through um, either Facebook or social media. Uh, most everyone I know is, is on social media and reach out that way. Um, or coming to events like this, if, if you are in person, you can come up and talk to, and talk to me, talk to any other filmmakers um, as they're putting their teams together. Uh, but there's, those are the ways that, that I know that you and, can get involved. And another way to get involved is to take the plunge and make your own film. I mean, you know, build a team if you're an actor. You know, have someone who can be your DP. Again, it's not always about having the best, most award-winning film. It's making a film. So if you have the story idea for a buddy picture, so talk to your friend and do it, do it yourself. I mean, again, it's the experience and the way you gain your experience is to take that plunge and do it. And then, do it again, but I would say that to actors, if you, again, are you in class with someone? Where, hey, I want to do the challenge. Can we, will you be a part of my film? Um, do you know a writer? Can you create a team? So that's, those are other advice I would give. Because it's been so great, but we do need to wrap up. So I'm going to ask one final question. Two-part question. What is something you've learned about yourself being a part of the challenge? And what is one piece of advice you would give to somebody who wants to do the challenge? So again, what is one last thing you've learned about yourself? And what is one piece of advice you would give to someone else? Michael, we'll start with you. Well, I've learned that if I believe I can do something, I can do it. I never thought of myself as an actor. I never thought I would be in films. I never thought of myself as a filmmaker. And oh shit, I'm doing this. So it's really taught me that about myself, that you can do something that you dream of. You can be a writer, you can be a director. It's possible. So this challenge taught me that, and I'm proud that this is my fourth film this year, and we'll see what happens next. And what would you put up by to give to somebody who wants to do it? Again, believe in yourself. Yeah, if, if you think you can do something, go ahead and do it. Don't be afraid. Don't say, I can't, I can't. No, no, go ahead and do it. Uh, before, I mean, I think I started this during the pandemic. It was 2020, and I was kind of uneasy about it. But first time I was successful, the second time I was successful, the third time I was successful. And I didn't win, but that's not the point. It's not about the winning. It's about getting your film out and becoming the best that you can in making this film and telling these stories. So that's what I would recommend. Oh, let's see, something I've learned is working on time management and making sure you have the ability to do the film in five days. Scheduling, you know, things will overlap certain events will overlap and plan ahead just like everyone's been saying you know start now honestly don't wait until the actual day is scheduled to start making sure that your schedule it's going to fluctuate but making sure that you get as much in order as possible so time management is my biggest piece of advice and really i can't stress it enough time management and really setting up your team start looking for your team asking around Ask people, writers, if they know anyone, or if they can join your team, I'd suggest starting now as soon as possible. And don't be afraid to just do it, like everyone's been saying. Well, for me as an actor, my advice to give is, you know, 
you never know what's going to happen last minute, what will come up so last minute. And so for me, and moving forward, you know, a couple days from now, something might show up. So I want to be prepared for that. So that could be a little thing or a big deal for you in the future. And I just say, again, do it. Don't be afraid. Don't worry if you are feeling anxious about it. Just go for it. And really, if you do make mistakes, you can learn from it and you can improve and do better as time goes on. And in the future, you'll just be a better version of yourself. So the advice I would say for anybody that wants to become a filmmaker, definitely get, your, get to know the it's about jump finding your to get your team together, get the pe right people on the bus that can help you like bring your own film to life. And at the very end, I guarantee you, don't never be afraid to try, never be afraid to try something new. Just try something new, and then and and remember, it's not about winning; it's all about the experience. Um, I really not. Um, what, what did you learn about yourself and what advice do you give to someone? What? In the challenge, I learned that it's never a good idea to do more than two roles on one film. Like, I can't, I can't do three roles without it affecting like the quality of the film. I can do two, but I can't do three. That's what I learned about myself. And I would say, um, find your tribe. Because once you find people that you work well with, you'll just keep making films together over and over again, and you'll grow as filmmakers together. Um, and I'm going to sneak in one other piece of advice. Keep your water bottle attached to your body at all times. <laughs> I, agree. I agree with the water bottle. Um, I think something I learned about myself, when, when I was in college, I was a writing minor. And then I lost the confidence in writing. I just thought I wasn't good enough. I think coming in into LA and into this industry, sometimes it can it can beat you down a little bit. Um, but I found through the challenges that I, I I'm like I'm gonna try and tackle writing again. It was really through the pandemic that that started to occur, um, kind of through necessity. It was like one of the writers we had their computer crashed, and finally I had to actually do it. And rather than be afraid of not being good enough, I realized again. You know, like going to the filmmaker gym, like doing anything, and, and some of my fellow panelists have mentioned this, just by doing it, I've gotten better. Yeah, it wasn't like the best thing that was ever written necessarily, but it gave me the ability to be like, oh, I can improve, I can get better at this, and only by doing that did, did I kind of come to that conclusion again. So that's really something I, I learned about my, myself through it. Um, what was the other part of the con question? What, what advice? What advice, you? yeah. Um, like other people, I will echo, just do it. Don't be afraid. Most people have a cell phone in their pocket now that like shoots 4K, right? And access to equipment. Like when I was a kid, I didn't have access to a lot of equipment. I mean, I had a VHS camera and I just did whatever. People now have very high quality cameras in their, in their pockets. People often have cameras that also function as phones, right? So I would say, Practice, have fun, go and figure stuff out. You don't have to just do it in the competition. You can do it at any point um, in your life, but really just do it. And the more you do it, the better you will get, the better you'll get, um, the more confident you'll be. And that really has been um, a, a pathway for me. And I did want to say through this, I met Carl, and I fell into work with Carl, and we're working with Kimmy Absolutely. We're working together this year on a film. Collaborating we're again. We're collaborating. So, but that is true. My friendship, I've gotten so many friends. So, guys, we're at time. I'm going to bring this back up. But one thing I want you guys to notice is a lot of things were repeated. And that's a good thing because if Michael and Ryan and Brian and Danny and Andrew and Carl, if you know that they all said the same thing, take that in because that means a lot of creators are saying, do it, get wrecked. I mean, it, it's not about, oh, I just heard that. It's like, oh, if seven creators are saying that, maybe that means something. Maybe I take that advice because seven people had said that. So I'm going to be Nick up. Thank you so much, guys. People online, I repeat it. Just do it. Let's bring back who I call 
the manifestor of Freaky Dreams, <laughs> my friend, Nitna Ricky. Yeah. Diana Elizabeth Jordan, this amazing panel. For those of you guys that haven't, go to disabilityfilmchallenge.com to learn about the buddy comedy genre. We have amazing prizes. Uh, check out every one of these films. Listen to all that amazing advice, and I can't wait to see your film soon! Yeah. Thanks again to our live stream. Jack yeah. Carlos, yeah. performing our Studio West, Meet the Biz. Nice. We'll see you soon. Woo. Hi, Mom, I know you're not on, but I'm just saying hi. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jack.